Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much to Dan for inviting me and for you uh, participating uh, this afternoon. What I want to do initially is just give you an outline uh, of the themes that I'm going to be discussing in this paper, and I'm going to read this um, as a formal paper. Intentional looking demands penetration, understanding, and meditation. So wrote Thomas Merton, American author and Trappist monk. My chapter discusses the integration of silence and slow time in the teaching of visual literacy. Silence and slow time are more commonly employed as techniques for teaching textual criticism. Here the technique is adapted to scaffold reading images as forms of visual texts. Metacognitive practices are frequently subtle and difficult to capture and measure precisely. This difficulty may account for why these processes have received only slight attention in the scholarship of teaching and learning. This chapter critiques an application of a silent pedagogy paradigm of metacognition as proposed by Ross Allen at Huddersfield University in England. Allen's paradigm considers silence not merely as quietness or absence of sound, but as a range of metacognitive tools fostering <coughs> reflective opportunities in teaching and learning. Engagements with Allen's silent pedagogy paradigm will be discussed within the learning and teaching of a two-year part-time diploma in European art history in adult and continuing education here at University College Cork. The challenge here was to encourage students to foster a disposition of intentional looking, whereby they became aware of the process underpinning visual analysis, enacted through a moment of sustained observation called a pause moment, and, in, and integrated within the protracted activity of slow looking. This aligns with a silent pedagogy paradigm. So initially I want to look at silence as presence as reviewed in the academic literature. An observation of silence was threaded through the communal life of the medieval university. For example, the statutes of Merton College founded at Oxford in 1264 provided for a reader at the common table while the scholars were expected to observe silence while eating together. This mirrored monastic practice of reading aloud and reflecting on the text in silence known as Lexio Divina, or divine reading. Since the 18th century, Western systems of education have privileged oral communication and literacy Listening, an activity we spend 40% of our time engaged in, is not formally taught. Brockbank and McGill speak of facilitator speech time as an ability to hold silence. Allen has proposed that classroom observations should take into account the complex skills of silent pedagogy, where the teacher makes conscious decisions to abstain from intervention based on continuous sensitive readings of the learning environment. While Jarowski and Sakdev have identified a need to explore attitudes and beliefs about science by teachers and students, Oren's study is substantially the first to tabulate multiple silences in contemporary educational <coughs> discourse. Oren has defined these as multimodal silences. These include visual silence, spatial silence, kinesthetics, meaning gestures, reading and writing, incorporating silence into pedagogy can help students develop metacognitively. So integrating visual presence in curriculum design, initially making visual analysis explicit. The initial phase of this five-year study, which extended from 2008 to 2013, took place between October 2008 and April 2009, when 88 part-time adult education students and five tutors performed aspects of Ollen's paradigm as a scaffold 
for disciplinary acquisition. The part-time Diploma in European Art History at University Co College Cork asks students to engage with the following fundamental question. How do art historians represent and communicate critical visual analysis? Malcolm S. Knowles, an American pioneer of lifelong learning, highlighted the importance of prior experience and self-direction uh, to these students. Applicants for the Adult Education Diploma in Cork do not normally wish to become professional art historians, but they do wish to be introduced to the disciplinary language in order to begin to think and act within it. Ollen's silent pedagogy paradigm assisted program tutors to scaffold the integration of prior learning and self-direction within disciplinary performances. While less material was covered, tutors moved from knowledge transmission to scaffolding disciplinary dispositions. Learning a new disciplinary practice involves laying down new patterns of thought and action that become habitual over time. Imitation or mimesis is a key step in this process. By fo fostering cognitive presence, tacit disciplinary understandings become more explicit. The next, next section is entitled Decoding a Metacognitive Process Through Slow Looking. Tutors teaching on the European Art History Diploma at Cork were invited to reflect on their application of a slow-looking paradigm by considering how it affected student learning and whether it had clarified or altered their own disciplinary consciousness over time. The teaching team were invited to explicitly model the staged process of critical visual analysis through pause moments and to reflect on their enactments. It was decided over the academic year to slow down the activity of looking and writing about artworks in order to focus on the process of thinking and writing about an image. This stage process was distilled into a paradigm which we called slow looking. What you see here in front of you is that the uh, notion of looking has itself been tabulated. So we go from a literal or a captioning level mm -hmm. to one of description or uh, articulating what the student sees in the image. This could also be applied to a text, or indeed it could be applied to an artifact, either within a museum context or indeed within a scientific context. Next, we look at the notion of critical meaning, uh, which involves analysis, and then finally is the broader association or contextual meaning, which is one of connecting. Uh, with their own uh, literature, the scholarly literature, and again, their own observation and experience. So together, these are com uh, enfold within a complete integrative step uh, in terms of um, uh, applying the analysis um, to that particular object, either a text, an image, or an artifact. What we found initially was that the hardest um, step uh, for students to articulate was that one of description, of giving themselves permission to articulate what it is they see. The rationale for the slow looking rubric proposed that once students knew how to look, what questions to ask about the image, they would be able to transfer these critical skills to other visual contexts. It was envisaged that the teacher-student dynamic would be enhanced through their mutual exploration of the processes of looking a teacher who explores his or her own contemplative mind is better able to help their students to do the same. Contemplative knowing is intrinsically integrative as it affects performance, character, and understanding. So now we look at the enactments of visual silence through slow looking and the pause moment. In previous years, students on the diploma cycle had learned to look at approximately one image every two minutes during a two-hour lecture. Responses in assignments and visual tests revealed a tendency towards surface recall with limited skill appropriation and application. In a module entitled The Art of Northern Europe, which focused on Renaissance art outside Italy, 
Competencies outlined in the module learning outcomes could be mapped onto the slow looking rubric. Competencies for assessment included identifying the impact of new artistic techniques, painting genres, modes of patronage, and assessing the impact of the 16th century reformation on the visual arts. By limiting the number of images for study and slowing down the process of looking, students were allowed uh, and given permission to open what they described as a mind space, which allowed them to make connections between history and visual culture. In Olin's study, one aspect of silence which was implicit in responses was that of meta-silence, where the teacher shares silence as a metacognitive tool with the class. Olin responds and uh, recommends that it is important for teachers to consider uh, meta-silence as an integral part of their communicative repertoire. <coughs> this is an intrinsic but underrepresented dimension of metacognitive presence. At Cork, program tutors initially struggled with silent and slow time interventions because they were attempting to slot interventions into received transmission model. This was a style that they were re reproducing implicitly as learnt from their experiences of lectures as undergraduates. However, once they were encouraged to experiment with different approaches, allowing interventions to occur spontaneously within a transformative model of teaching and learning, they found that these interventions arose more naturally, helping to establish an underlying structure to their sessions. While the slow-looking scaffold was initially beneficial, Charted longitudinally, that's between 2009 and 2013, students tended to rely on the scaffold as a mnemonic device. So there was a continuing onus on the diploma teaching team to reimagine the application of the slow looking scaffold so that it remained dynamic. Through their efforts, tutors began to see the value of limiting curriculum content so that more time could be devoted to modeling critical visual analysis. Power to pause. The process of slow time has been perceived as an inner time for meaning making. Dyslexic art history students in particular found the slow looking rubric of benefit. Dyslexia constitutes part of a group of specific learning difficulties and it causes difficulties in fluent literacy due to ina inaccurate coding of letters and graphic symbols into speech sounds and speech patterns. Dyslexia, however, is associated with remarkably artistic uh, creativity. Interestingly, incidences of dyslexia are far higher among visual art students than non-art students. Dyslexic students benefit from multi-sensory teaching and an acknowledgement of their personal learning styles. A dyslexic art history student we supported found initial difficulty in sequencing and articulating the processes of critical visual analysis. The slow looking rubric helped to scaffold his thinking in a structured way. A slow looking scaffold enacted through moments of pause gave the student time to sequence his visual analysis. By the conclusion of an academic year, he had improved his written assignments by 10%, and he gave credit for this to the scaffolding afforded by the rubric. <coughs> so now, future directions. The proliferation of information technology means that students have greater access to information at a greater speed than ever before. But can educators assume that students know how to pick their way through the mass of content in a discerning, critical, and ethical manner? Intentional critical analysis, fostered through either text or image, negates the necessity for coverage. An implication of this integrative step is that it encourages pruning back curriculum content so that teachers might devote more time to making explicit 
the processes underlying disciplinary practices. So now, in conclusion. The psychological effects of silence are grounded in the following. Firstly, in attitude. Secondly, in environment. And thirdly, in int intention. Acts of either revealing or concealing the intention of silence and its duration of use within a performance of action can greatly determine how the phenomenon of silence is received. For a silent intervention to be positively incorporated within the curriculum then, firstly, we need the reason, secondly, the purpose, and thirdly, the duration of the intervention needs to be clearly announced to students and appraised by faculty and staff. In this study, slow-looking interventions gave students space to see and time to look. Interestingly, primary school teachers enrolled in the European Art History Diploma at Cork responded that they had begun to engage more intentionally with visual resources in their professional practice following the slow time interventions they had experienced themselves. If holistic approaches to learning gain acceptance, then silence and slow time may yet contribute to 21st century learning and teaching. Thank you very much. <laughs>